trigeminal nerve is the fifth cranial nerve. The trigeminal nerve shows unique features among all other cranial nerves. This is the largest cranial nerve and this is the nerve of first branchial arch or first pharyngeal arch. And this trigeminal nerve provides sensory fibers to four peripheral parasympathetic ganglia like otic ganglion, pterygopalatine ganglion, ciliary ganglion and also submandibular ganglion. This nerve is called as trigeminal nerve because that shows three divisions ophthalmic division, maxillary division and mandibular division. The ophthalmic and maxillary divisions are sensory and the mandibular nerve shows mixed fibers both sensory and motor fibers. Before going to the details of nuclei of trigeminal nerve we have to make out that the most of the neurons present in the trigeminal nerve are sensory neurons which are carrying sensations from various territories of the trigeminal nerve like ophthalmic, maxillary and mandibular. And these neurons are pseudo unipolar neurons. Their cell bodies or soma are located in the trigeminal ganglion. These neurons got a peripheral process and a central process. The peripheral process will be carrying or receiving the sensory stimuli from various territories and the central processes are connected to various nuclei of the trigeminal nerve which are located at various parts of brainstem. Now let us see what are these nuclei. The first set of the nuclei to explain is spinal nucleus. The spinal nucleus is located mainly in the pons and also in the medulla and also its lower portion will be extending to the cervical part of spinal cord. So this is an elongated nucleus distributed throughout this brainstem, pons, medulla and also upper part of spinal cord, cervical part of spinal cord. That's why this is called as spinal nucleus. And this nucleus receives the pain and temperature sensations from various territories of the trigeminal nerve. Second nucleus to explain is principal sensory nucleus. So this is the area of principal sensory nucleus. This is located in the pons and this generally receives general sensations from various territories of trigeminal nerve like ophthalmic, maxillary and mandibular carrying general sensations. The third is mesencephalic nucleus. The mesencephalic nucleus is located in the central gray matter of the midbrain. This is quite above in the midbrain. And this receives proprioceptive sensations from the muscles of mastication and also from the muscles of facial expression and also from a joint called as temporomandibular joint. Next is motor nucleus. The motor nucleus of the trigeminal nerve that is located in the upper part of the pons. The fibers arising from this nucleus form the motor root of the trigeminal nerve. So this is the motor nucleus and the fibers forms the motor root of the trigeminal nerve and this motor root and these neurons supplies to the muscles which are derived or developed from the first branchial arch. That mainly involves the muscles of mastication. The neurons of the trigeminal nerve after emerging from various nuclei these groups of neurons will emerge out from the brainstem. The site of emergence of this trigeminal nerve is ventral aspect of the pons. So this is the ventral view of the brainstem, medulla, pons and the midbrain. So here we can see from the ventral aspect of the pons, pons on either side we have the trigeminal nerve. This is the site of emergence of trigeminal nerve to the cranial cavity from the brainstem. After arising from this ventral aspect of the pons, this trigeminal nerve enters to the trigeminal gangli ganglion. And in the trigeminal ganglion, further this trigeminal nerve will divide into three divisions like ophthalmic, maxillary and mandibular divisions. 
the ophthalmic division passes through the superior orbital fissure and maxillary division passes through the foramen rotundum and mandibular division passes through the foramen ovale in order to escape from the cranial cavity the trigeminal ganglion is also called as semilunar ganglion or gessarian ganglion in this ganglion we can see rich number of pseudo unipolar neurons its central pro- now let us learn all the three divisions of the trigeminal nerve in detail the first to learn is ophthalmic nerve this is the first division of trigeminal nerve the ophthalmic nerve so this ophthalmic nerve is a sensory nerve this does not contain the motor fibers initially this ophthalmic nerve will be related to the lateral wall of the cavernous sinus and enters to the orbit through superior orbital fissure so the ophthalmic nerve passes to the orbit through the superior orbital fissure so before entering to the superior orbital fissure this ophthalmic nerve will be related to lateral wall of cavernous sinus further after entering to the orbit through the superior orbital fissure this divides into three branches like frontal nerve nasociliary nerve and lacrimal nerve so after passing through superior orbital fissure it divides into frontal maxillary nasociliary frontal nasociliary and lacrimal nerve The frontal nerve divides into supratrochlear and supraorbital nerves. And these supratrochlear and supraorbital nerve, these are supplying to forehead region and the scalp region skin. And the nasociliary gives several branches. The anterior ethmoidal nerve which supplies to the nasal cavity and the skin of the tip of nose. And the posterior ethmoidal nerve which supplies the ethmoidal and sphenoidal sinuses. The long ciliary nerve supplies to the ciliary body, iris and the cornea and the infratrochlear nerve which supplies the nose above the medial canthus of the eye, conjunctiva, both eyelids and the lacrimal sac. These are the areas which are supplying, supplied by infratrochlear nerve. And the lacrimal nerve is sensory to the upper eyelid and also to the conjunctiva. The lacrimal nerve carries secretomotor fibers from zygomatic nerve to the lacrimal gland. The second division of the trigeminal nerve is maxillary nerve. The maxillary nerve is related to the lateral wall of cavernous sinus in the cranial cavity. Further, that will pass through the foramen rotundum. So here in this picture, from the trigeminal nerve, the second division that is the maxillary that will be running forwards and it will be passing through the rounded foramen that is through the foramen rotundum after passing through the foramen rotundum this maxillary now reaches to the pterygopalatine fossa and in the pterygopalatine fossa this maxillary now will be suspending a peripheral parasympathetic ganglion that ganglion is called as pterygopalatine gang- ganglion Now let us analyze what are the various branches of maxillary nerve. There are several branches from the maxillary nerve. The first branch is meningeal branch. So as the name suggests you, this is supplying to the meninges, that is the dura mater of the middle and anterior cranial fossae. Second branch is zygomatic branch. The zygomatic branches supply the skin of the prominence of the face and also the temple region. So that will give zygomatico temporal and zygomatico facial. Next, the infraorbital nerve that supplies the lower eyelid, side of the nose and the upper lip. The palatine branches supply the mucosa of the palate. The nasopalatine branches that supply the mucosa of the nasal cavity, palate and also the maxillary air sinuses. the pharyngeal branch that is sensory to the eustachian tube and also to the mucosa of nasopharynx so that will go back to the pharyngeal region 
The orbital branches supply the periosteum of the orbit, sphenoidal and also the ethmoidal air sinuses. So these are the major branches which are arising from maxillary nerve. Next is mandibular nerve. The mandibular nerve is the largest among the three divisions. And this is a mixed nerve that consists of both sensory fibers and also the motor fibers. The mandibular nerve after arising from the trigeminal ganglion that will pass through a foramen called as foramen ovale. After passing through the foramen ovale, this mandibular nerve enters to the infratemporal fossa. Further, in infratemporal fossa, it got various branches and wide area of distributions. So this mandibular nerve divides into anterior and posterior divisions after passing through the foramen ovale. This division happens in the infratemporal fossa. The branches from the mandibular nerve can be categorized into three branches from the trunk, branches from anterior division and branches from posterior division. The branches from the trunk are meningeal branch. The meningeal branches or nervous spinosus that will pass through the foramen spinosum again back and it will supply the dura mater. Nerve to medial pterygoid. This supply the medial pterygoid and also provides branches to tensor tympani and tensor palatini. This branch passes through the aortic ganglion without relaying in the aortic ganglia. Next, let us discuss the branches from anterior division. The branches from anterior division mainly are muscular or motor branches like masseteric nerve that is to the masseter muscle. Next is deep temporal nerve that supplies the temporalis muscle. Nerve to lateral pterygoid and that supply the lateral pterygoid muscle and the buccal nerve that is sensory that will supply the buccal mucosa. Next branches from the posterior division that is auricular temporal nerve and inferior alveolar nerve and the third one lingual nerve. The inferior alveolar nerve that will provide another branch before entering to the mandibular foramen. This branch is called as nerve to mylohyoid and this branch supplies the mylohyoid muscle and also anterior belly of digastric muscle. So here in this picture I would like to show you the lingual nerve here. This is from the posterior division and also another branch is inferior alveolar. So inferior alveolar nerve enters to the mandibular foramen. Before entering you can see another thin branch is shown here. This is nerve to mylohyoid that will come and that will supply the mylohyoid and also to the anterior belly of digastric. From the lingual nerve, suspended from the lingual nerve, we have a ganglion called as the mandibular ganglion. And this picture is clearly explaining you the motor root and sensory root of the trigeminal nerve. The sensory root fibers are relaying in the trigeminal ganglion, but the motor root without relaying without that will pass just deep to this ganglion further that also will join with the sensory root both the sensory root and motor root joins further it will enter to the infratemporal fossa and divides into anterior and posterior divisions so from the main trunk we got two branches that was meningeal branch and also nerve to medial pterygoid the meningeal branch supplies to the dura mater after passing through the foramen spinosa. And now to medial pterygoid supplies three muscles, tensor tympani, tensor palatine and the medial pterygoid respectively. Further, the anterior and posterior division. From the anterior division, we have the deep temporal nerve that will supply to the temporalis muscle. Branches to the lateral pterygoid to supply the lateral pterygoid and the masseteric branch that will supply the masseter. Another sensory nerve is there that is the buccal nerve to the buccal mucosa. 
from the posterior division we learned that there are branches like auricular temporal nerve that will encircle its two roots are encircling the middle meningeal artery next is lingual nerve that will go to the tongue and suspended from the lingual nerve we have a ganglion so that is called as submandibular ganglion and another branch is the inferior alveolar nerve so the inferior alveolar nerve supplies to the lower set of the teeth after passing through the mandibular foramen further it will emerge from emerge through a foramen called as mental foramen and its name will be changed to the mental nerve and before entering to the mandibular foramen the inferior alveolar nerve is providing a branch that is nerve to mylohyoid that will supply mainly to the mylohyoid muscle further it will supply to the anterior belly of digastric muscle now let us discuss some clinical anatomy or some clinical terms related to the trigeminal nerves the first one is trigeminal neuralgia so here severe pain intolerable pain can happen throughout the distribution of trigeminal nerve and this trigeminal neuralgia can happen to any one territory of the trigeminal nerve also like ophthalmic maxillary or mandibular territory there will be intense intense pain will be there certain onset next is corneal reflex on touching the cornea with a wisp of cotton there is reflex closure of both eyes so in this reflex activity the afferent fibers are through the ophthalmic division of trigeminal nerve that is sensory from the cornea and the center of this reflex action is located in the motor nucleus of the facial nerve and the afferent fibers are coming through the facial nerve and the branches which are supplying to the orbicularis oculi muscle next is jaw jerk reflex so in this jaw jerk reflex to elicit this reflex the patient opens the mouth slightly and then the examiner places the index finger on the middle of the patient's chin and gently taps it this causes bilateral contra- contraction of masseter muscles in this reflex activity the afferent limb is sensory component of mandibular nerve that is bringing proprioceptive impulses from muscles of mastication to the mesencephalic nucleus which is connected to the motor nucleus of trigeminal nerve of both sides the center of this reflex is located in the motor nucleus of trigeminal nerve and the afferent limb is the motor component of the mandibular nerve next is herpes zoster so throughout the distribution of the trigeminal nerve the eruptions of herpes zoster can happen and sometimes only one territory also can get affected so the eruptions can be seen throughout the distribution of ophthalmic nerve maxillary nerve or the mandibular nerve respectively 